What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi coach and give me six months of your time and I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we have another client before and after video. This is gonna be a professional golfer who's trying to pass QT, scoring average right around 70. The main issue was we're trying to get him to hit more of a consistent draw. That's really the pattern he wanted to hit. However, he was getting a lot of blocks and a lot of overdraws. So if you're interested in that, well, Let's go do this thing. But before we get into this video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you're too busy or you just can't make it out to lessons with me, make sure to check out Kiwi Golf Japan. It is the membership site for you. With over 160 plus videos of golf instruction, if you're looking to learn in a virtual setting, it's the perfect place for you. So check out that link and with that out of the way, let's get into this video. So like I said in the intro, this is gonna be a professional golf swing before and after. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before swing and then the after swing and then we're gonna come back and discuss what we'll be talking about in this particular video. So this is the before swing. All right, and this is gonna be the after swing right here. All right, so as you can see, really just the overall direction of the two swings looks pretty different, right? The one on the right of your screen is gonna have a little bit more of a rightward swing direction, and the one on the left of your screen is probably gonna have a little bit more of a left swing direction. Now, the reason why direction of the swing is so important is because of the type of shot that he wanted to play. He wanted to hit more of a push draw. So if we get the direction of the swing too far left, it's gonna be impossible to hit a push draw. Now, it'd be possible to hit more of maybe a straight draw or a pull draw, but if you wanna hit a push draw, then we can't really get the direction of the swing left so that was an overriding thing that we we're trying to fix in this before and after so that's something that you should keep in mind when we start talking about the swing mechanics that we're changing throughout this swing so the first thing I want to talk about is gonna be the top of swing position we change the club shaft movement in the elbow after that we're gonna talk about transition in position 5 and then from position 5 to position 6 and then from position 6 into the golf ball and then from there for everyone on the membership site we'll leave you with um, some follow-through ideas as well I think that'll be pretty interesting so let's go ahead and jump into the top of swing so one of the issues this player was having in the before swing was he definitely was having a little bit of a steepening move of the club shaft in transition. So the club shaft was kind of standing up in early transition. And then from there, that got the pitch of the shaft pretty steep throughout most of the downswing, which was making it easier for him to get the direction of the swing more left and not right for that push draw. So what we wanted to do was we actually wanted to get the club shaft position at the top a little bit more laid off, just in case he does get a little bit of steepening motion. If it's more laid off, if he steepens a little bit, at least he'll be into a pretty good position five to where the club shaft is flatter and it'll still be easy to get that direction of the swing to the right so to check for this go ahead and draw an angle on the club shaft and you can kind of get a number here so he's right around 33 degrees if we go take a look at the after we're going to see he's right now over at 47 degrees right so that's a pretty massive change in terms of how flat the club shaft is and then again if he is to get that little bit of steepening motion at least he'll still be in a good spot at position five and it'll be easier to get that direction of the swing to the right now the other thing we changed at the top of the swing was going to be the elbow position and all we really did was we were trying to get him a lot more width as well as get the uh, overall arm a little higher at the top of the swing not so pinched down now the reason why we wanted to do this was with the longer clubs whenever we get so narrow like this it's easier to get the hands closer to the golf ball before the club head gets to the ball which means that you're dragging the handle forward and then from there because you drag the handle forward it's hard to let the club head catch up hence it's hard to hit a draw right it's easy to hit more of a push block out to the right which was kind of the main miss this player was having so as you can see if you want to check for this yourself try to get this arm kind of parallel to the ground like the after swing over here and then in terms of it being bent or not that's a little bit difficult to check from this down the line view that'd be something you'd probably want to check for the face on view and when you're checking for that make sure to draw an angle on the right arm if it's closer to 90 degrees well that's obviously way too bent if it's more like 120 degrees to about like uh, maybe even 100 degrees that's a little bit closer to the range that we want to be all right so as we start to come down I want to show you guys that steepening motion in the before swing so as she comes down you can see that the club shaft is slightly steepening here and these two lines that I'm about to draw will be intersect now as well he started from a little bit of a steeper club shaft position in the before swing as well so as we start to get to position five because of those two things we're gonna see that the club shaft is pretty vertical especially when we're trying to hit an in to out push draw he's over at 24 degrees this means that if he keeps this club shaft position the direction of the swing will definitely be left and he's not gonna be able to hit a push draw so the only thing he could do is either flatten like crazy or just continue 
continue to swing left and not be able to hit a push draw. So if we go take a look at the after swing, we're still gonna see a little bit of this steepening motion. However, because we started from a little bit of a flatter club shaft position, he's still gonna get into a position five where he's in the correct spot. So as you can see, those two lines are still intersecting. So he's still kind of steepening the club shaft. But as we get to position five now, the interesting point is we're gonna be at right around our 35 to 40 degree range. So he's right around 36 degrees, which is much better than the 20 something degrees he was before. So that's a key point for you guys at home. Sometimes it's obviously difficult to get rid of that steepening motion completely, especially in like the first lesson or second lesson. However, if you can at least get the club shaft position into a better spot at the top, you can still slightly steepen the club shaft and still get into an okay range at position five. And it's kind of like a short term quick fix. And then once you can actually learn how to move the club shaft down without actually steepening it early then from there that would be the best case scenario but in the short term this might be an easy quick fix for you guys out there to at least get yourself in a decent spot at position five now as we continue to go down we're going to see p5.5 this player was trying to steepen the club out towards the golf ball because again he was kind of under the assumption that if he can kind of get the club head to move out towards the golf ball and then not really flip or not really release the club it was going to be a better way for him to hit the draw however the way that he was going about steepening the club and the timing of it as well as what release he was adding to it actually ended up just having him hit a lot of blocks out to the right if we go take a look at the after swing now we're going to see the club shaft is more so on the forearm which when we're trying to get the direction of the swing to the right this is a much better spot that we want it to be in right if we want to hit a fade yeah it's okay to get it towards the top or the middle of the bicep that's completely fine but if we're trying to hit a push draw we don't want to see that towards the middle of the bicep like it was in the before swing that's gonna be really difficult to control all right then from this position um, in the before swing he would continue to move that club head out towards the golf ball and then at P6, we're seeing the club head more aligned with the hands, which again, if we're trying to get the direction of the swing left, that's probably a good thing. And that's what you want to do if you want to be more on top of the plane. If you're trying to hit that push draw, this would be something you don't want to do. Because when you get your club head into a position right here at P6, now it's pretty impossible to get your direction of the swing to the right. It's still doable, but it's a short period of time and you really have to change the direction really late in the swing. It'll probably be really difficult to do. So most of the people from here are going to continue to stay on top of the plane, which he kind of did. And then get that direction of the swing left and then from there you're going to see a path that's closer to zero and then again if we're trying to hit that push draw and you have a club path that's zero it's impossible to hit the push draw all right so as we take a look at the after swing now we're going to see the club head getting slightly underneath the plane now this is a little bit too much for my liking so if we draw a line down here we can see that it's more towards the back of the foot i'd like to see it a little bit closer to this range right here just um, behind the toe line that would be more my preference of underneath the plane but again this is not going to be the end of the world he's just going to have more of like a positive seven or positive six club path a little bit too much but still much better than being in line with the hands when we're trying to hit a push draw so that's it for you guys on youtube i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me give you some quick takeaway points uh, when it comes to this video so first and foremost when you're trying to hit a draw i know i typically talk about being a little bit more on top of the plane and kind of pitching that club head out towards the golf ball but if you're trying to hit a push draw you want to be careful with how much on top of the plane you really are I think some of the checkpoints that we talked about in this video should be something that you should look at in your own golf swing. You want to be at a good spot at position five, right? If anything, getting a little bit flatter of a club shaft there. At position 5.5, you want to see that club shaft on the forearm as opposed to kind of middle of the bicep. And then at P6, you actually want to see the club head slightly behind the hands because again, the overriding theme for a push draw is we're trying to start the ball right at the target line and then draw. So the direction of the swing needs to be more to the right than when you're trying to hit more so of a neutral shot or a pull fade. So if you can really take that information to heart, I gave you the checkpoints, go out there and try to practice it. I think you'll do just fine. But if you're still struggling, again, give me six months of your time. And I'll give you the best golf swing in your life. That stands true. So make sure to go check out our lesson link down below. Sign up for our six month program. Also sign up for a membership because it really supports this channel. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.